Back in the 50s, 60s, our old people used to go out and collect oysters. We want to grow our own oysters rather than collecting them out in the wild. Goulburn Island, it's a paradise. You've got everything on, on the island. We've got crabs, we've got uh, we've lobsters, we, we, we get um, uh, all sorts of uh, seafood uh, um, on, on the island. Australia's most remote oyster farm is in the middle of the Arafura Sea, 300 kilometres from Darwin. Warrawi is the indigenous name for Goulburn Island. Population, just 300. For the past six years, locals have been building up an oyster farm, using cages at a point where two natural currents converge in the sea to grow the native variety of oysters called black lip. Aboriginal elder Benul Galaminda has been a key player. This is a project that I've been passionate about and um, it was part of the dream that I had was uh, grow. Because back in the 50s, 60s, our old people used to go out and collect oysters. Uh, we want to grow our own oysters rather than collecting them out in the wild. So six years ago we started that and um, got to the stage where we said, all right, let, let's, let's grow, let, let's grow. At the moment, it's a tiny farm, but Benung Galaminda has big hopes. He believes this could provide long-term work for young people on their traditional land that's profitable and sustainable. I'm still pushing and I want to see young people start to move in and start showing, not a role, leadership role, but taking part in, in, in looking after our uh, business. But trading their ocean wares is by no means a new concept to these people. It's not new. We, we were uh, oyster eaters. We, we used to go out and, and, and uh, you know, uh, that's, that's 100 years ago. Uh, um, but then in the last uh, 50 years, people started to collect and selling, you know, sell them out in the, uh, to other communities, especially in Darwin. Uh, as far as... Tennant Creek, Kananara. Early artwork found in Arnhem Land also shows the Macassan people were travelling to ocean communities in these parts from as far back as the 1500s. They'd sail from what is now Indonesia to collect sea trepang, a type of ocean slug prized for its medicinal properties in Chinese culture. While the oyster is a native tropical variety, its numbers have dwindled and harvesting from the wild alone wouldn't be sustainable. So they've sought help. Samantha Nolan is one of Australia's leading research scientists into native tropical oysters. She grew up in the Territory and has a passion for the ocean. So our research here at the Darwin Aquaculture Centre is focused on producing lots of these spat. So spat are juvenile rock oysters, so the baby stage. And we've got a lot of them here in the screen. They look like little rocks and they are called rock oysters because of that. So what we want to do is produce enough spat to be able to supply commercial industry in the Northern Territory. The spat is then transported out to Warrawee and placed in the farm to grow out. For the last five years, Samantha Nolan has studied every aspect of the black lip oysters, trying to increase the numbers they can produce. We've come from producing tens of thousands of spat to now hundreds of thousands, and our latest run, 200,000. So really, we're getting up there. As for how exactly you get the oysters to kick into parenting mode, well, it's really surprisingly simple. We want them to spawn, so we lay them all out on the table and they're in salt water and then we stress them and we stress them with a rainfall event, but we mock up a rainfall event. So Paul's going to tip in a bucket of fresh water and they'll think that it's raining, they'll get really stressed and then they'll need to reproduce, they'll need to spawn. It'll take two years for these baby oysters to be ready to eat 
And that's one reason this species shows such promise. The reason that we chose this oyster to focus on for aquaculture is because when you're farming an animal you want it to grow as quick as possible so you can sell it um, and because the oyster is so large it grows really quickly and it means that the turnaround on the farm can be, can be a lot quicker. She's confident with more research they could get that growing time even faster. The isolated and pristine water helps keep the threat of disease low. So these are some of our smaller oysters. The hope is that the Warrawee farm will in a few years' time be able to produce significant commercial quantities. It's quite special because it's a native oyster um, and it's a tropical. So there's no other industry in Australia and even globally that focuses on this species of native tropical rock oyster. Other communities right across the north and even internationally are watching with interest how this unfolds. But neighbouring communities are probably in the best position. 80% of the coastline in the Northern Territory is Indigenous owned. We're looking at shellfish quality assurance and aquaculture licences uh, so that communities can have aquaculture licences and progress out of this research phase and into small scale commercial and then larger scale commercial. Uh, and it tastes amazing. I'm pretty biased, but I think it's better than any other oyster we produce in Australia. There are other communities who are trying to do their best by catching and collecting their own product like fish and uh, this is part of our, you know, Golden Island one, Golden Island goal. I'm, I'm telling the world that um, we can do it.